if I tell somebody that I have IBD, generally the, the first response is either what is IBD or I have an uncle, an aunt, a friend, you know, a sister, a brother who has the condition. Uh, if it's the former, there may be misinformation. You know, you say, well, I, I have a, a tummy ache. Well, how is that, an, or you have a tummy ache. What, how is that, you know, any different to, you know, when I've, you know, eaten too much or, you know, I have indigestion or, or whatnot. So, it, you know, you end up having to explain and often there isn't the time to, to give all the information. And so you can send them, to send them away, but they may not do that. Um, that's maybe a worst case scenario. The best case scenario is that, you know, you have been able to inform them and maybe they're more sensitive when an issue comes up with somebody around them. Uh, sometimes the, uh, they'll go and they'll become involved. The lack of understanding from, from the public, uh, it's disheartening. We, the public doesn't really have a great idea or understanding of what the condition involves. And so because of that, it can be difficult to access resources through school or through the workplace. Uh, and the last thing that a patient needs when they're going through a flare-up is to have to try and educate an employer or a professor or, you know, a classmate or a neighbor or whatnot about what it is that they need. That just adds more stress. So it becomes a balancing act of how much information do you disclose when you're not in a flare to uh, try and prevent, you know, the, the added stress when you are in a flare-up, and uh, how much information do you sort of give right at the at the onset of a flare to uh, to try and make it easier for yourself in order to get the resources that you need to uh, to make it easier for you to to go through treatment and, and get yourself out of that flare. I mean needs to be recognized as a chronic disease. Uh, well, there's a lot of levels. I think on the basis, if once it's recognized, then access to that information and support in getting that information in, in the patient's hand and the people living with hand uh, is key. And we just go back to the knowledge, right? And now you're seeing that support network not just come from patient-based organizations, are from the healthcare, the individuals who work in healthcare who care about the people they support. It's coming at a government level, it's supporting the patient, the individual living with, at all levels as they're dealing with the illness. The fact that IBD is not recognized as a chronic illness makes me feel sad, uh, angry, a bit ashamed, um, that I should work harder, that I should do more, that I can be doing more, uh, it's also exciting because it's a challenge, right? That's what I like to have in front of me, and I've gotten to the place where I have the support already, and helping other people achieve that is, is a huge goal. And there's a good group with this Gut Inspired crew and the, the NGOs that support us, and uh, it's powerful to be part of something like that.